I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's good, y'all? Trying to hear the most woke, no joke, and I'm back out again with a brand new video. And today we're focusing on episode six of Amazon series All or Nothing, where they cover the full 2018 season for the Carolina Panthers. Y'all remember how hopeful we were even after we lost that game to the Steelers? We're thinking to ourselves, okay, look, man, we lost by 31. Thursday night game. Look, it's a, we're the away team on a Thursday game. It, we played on Sunday. It's kind of hard to come back, have that turnaround. We had a week four bye. We have game after game after game straight through the season. It's kind of tough, but we're still only six and three. Three losses going into week 11 of the season. I'll take that every single time. I have no problem going through 10 games and coming out six and three. No problem at all. And we're going against Detroit, a team that's not bad. But a team that's also not great. They're just a step above average. I think they're uh, they're an above average team. I wouldn't call them mediocre. I put them in the same breath as the Bengals, maybe the Titans. No, those kind of teams. And you can probably bet good money on them losing in the first round of the playoffs if they get to it. It'll be a good game when you play them. It's not a knockover game. It's not a game you can sleep on. But it's a game that should be winnable, whether it's at home or away. And speaking of home, we see a really good segment, a really good profile on Devin Funches. Because this is a homecoming game for him. He's from the Detroit area. I don't think he's actually from Detroit, Detroit. But he's from Michigan, from the area, the surrounding area. And he wants to go off. The dude is excited to be there. He wants to go off. And he's had some troubles here and there throughout the season. Some drops. I think there were some times where I don't think he was fighting his hardest to get passes. Now, he did have some really good catches this season. Had some really impressive moments. But the biggest thing about, uh, about Devin Funches for the last couple years has been he's obviously good. But he's inconsistent. You can't really depend on him, you know, down to down every single time like you can with uh, Greg Olson, like you can with CMC, like you can with some of these guys, even like Jarius Wright. I depend on, I, I, I'm I, 100% sold on Jarius Wright. This man's a security blanket. DJ Moore even, even though he has some fumble problems, he'll catch the ball. Curtis Samuel even, I want to see him stay healthy for another full year. But other than that, I know I can depend on those guys to make catches and make plays when we need them. Devin Funches can make big plays. It just happens to be a matter of when will he make those big plays and when can you anticipate where he will just, you know, go and fall flat. And that's what happened in the Detroit game. He fell flat and then the balls he was supposed to catch fell flat on the ground. That's a bad pun. But hear me out here. It was really tough to watch parts of this episode because on one hand, you know, you want to criticize Devin Funches because he wasn't always the best on the team. He really could have been a really good player. Now, he wasn't like the other guy. Now, that other guy could have been a really good player, another big body receiver that we drafted pretty high. And he turned out to be a, a Bojangles spokesman. But with Devin Funches, he actually did have potential to be a really good guy. Cam gassed him up. Cam said, look, bro, you have the potential to be a perennial all pro, a perennial Pro Bowl receiver? Maybe. But what we saw was him, you know, we saw a clip of him getting really mad at the QB's coach, or I don't think it was a QB coach. It was actually like one of the one of the QB coaches giving the signals to Cam. He was getting impatient that the, 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 the play call was coming in a little bit too late or not fast enough for his liking. So he left the field and got in the coach's face. That's tough. We saw someone else do that a couple years ago with Captain Mundelein. That didn't turn out well. But then we found out that his cousin actually got killed on his way to a cookout, uh, I think the week prior, and the funeral was that day. So you feel really bad about it. You think to yourself, man, it's, it's really tough. And these guys are, are they're human beings, it's not just athletes for, for our, our viewing pleasure, for our entertainment. These are people working and living. They have lives. They have families. They have more going on in their daily life other than our, our, our entertainment of watching a, 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 a children's sports game on television. And then what happened in that Detroit game was was bad. I forgot how many drops he had, but the number doesn't really matter. If I told you it's a lot, the best way to describe what happened for Devin Funches in that Detroit Lions game is this sentence right here. It's a really short sentence, so it won't take too much time. Let me get it ready. <coughs> Devin Funches is now on the Indianapolis Colts. That's the best way to describe what happened in that Lions game. I think that was the game where coaches was like, okay, okay, we, we, eh, whether, whether you're hurt, whether he had back spasms at the end of the game, but that ain't, that, that ain't what caused the, the drops after drops 
after it drops. And I don't want to put the whole game on his back because we saw, what, what was it? Graham Gano missed a 33-yard field goal in a PAT. It might be flipped. I know one of them is 34 yards. One of them is 33. Point is, he missed two chip shot field goals. But it's not even just that. The, the video didn't mention this at all. But we were getting killed on the run or in the run game. Our run D was bad, bad, bad for a long time this season. And carry on was, was he was killing us. He got injured in this game. Carry on got injured. His name carry on Johnson or carry on Lewis. I forgot what the running back's name was. And he was, he was gashing us. This man was gashing us. I don't think he got a touchdown in the game, but he was really killing us. And then the backup came in and he was killing us. But with all things happening with Devin Punches dropping those passes with, uh, Graham Gano missing those kicks with uh, the defense not making any kind of good tackles. We were still in a position where a two point conversion could have won the game and we just didn't get it. Cam was under pressure. He kind of got stuck in the in, in, in the pocket, tried to roll out left, saw an open receiver kind of late, tried to get it in there and it was too high. And at first I was on Cam's head because look, you can't overthrow, you can't throw too high to a guy in the end zone that often. It's becoming a really big issue. But if you watch that play, I wish I knew what time it was. It was 1758 in episode six. Go watch that play again. Cam throws that ball high, but it only just gets over the defensive tackle's hand. So if he throws that ball lower, that's getting batted down the line. Now, I don't know if Cam actually calculated that in his head when he threw it kind of high, but that pass was going to get batted down if he threw it any lower. So we really had, it was an illusory situation. And honestly, there's a lot of space in front of the receiver. I forgot who it was. I think it may have been DJ Moore, but he had a lot of space with uh, DJ going right. He had a ton of space, honestly, the whole, a lot of real estate there. But Cam was rolling left, and he would have been throwing across his body and against his momentum. So it's kind of a hard sell. Now, how do you tell Cam to make that pass there? It's a tough pass to make over the defender, and it, it, it was a bad angle. The DT was actually in the lane there, and it, it really wouldn't have worked unless you floated it in there. And that's going to take some supreme touch because you don't want it to float out there because it's either an injury or an incompletion, and it, it, it was bad all around. I think Devin Punches is a good player, and I think he's going to have a really good season playing with Andrew Luck in that high-powered Colts offense. I wish nothing but the best for him. Then we see the Seattle game, and there's not much to talk about here. We just got we just got beat. I mean, uh, Dante gets hurt, I believe, really early in that game, and I remember we were all talking about, you know, hey, how, how don't we give Corn Elder a shot? We're seeing Captain Butterly not play all that great. Give Corn Elder a shot. Why can't Corn Elder? We saw all those all those videos of him working out in the in the in the off season, you know, getting ready and stuff. And then he got in the game. We said, no, 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 get him out the game, get him out the game. Russell Wilson targeted this man heavily. And speaking of heavily, the next thing you see is 6'8", 298 pound Stefan Janikowski come on that field, and that dude is huge. He is He's huge for a kicker. That man's big for a linebacker. That guy could probably play edge rusher for all I know. I think he's kind of old. How old is Janikowski? I don't know. The man is big. He's not 6'8". Probably. I, mean, I don't know. The dude's big, though. And he comes on, nails the kick, and we lose. And it's another game where you watch a, a game that the Panthers should have won. I don't want to say easily, but a game that was definitely in our grasp and we got the bag, and we did not flip it and tumble it. We fumbled it. Another game where we just fumbled the bag, and it is what it is. That's what happened in our games. We really can't sit here and blame every single game we lost on Cam's shoulder. You can't blame it all on the defense. We can't blame it all on individual missteps that happened, whether it was, you know, uh, Dante one game, which really wasn't a big deal, that's AB, or, you know, Devin Funches another game, or kicking a different game. <laughs> It's a culmination of a lot of things where even with those issues, we were always in position to win and we couldn't get it done. Just couldn't get it done. And that's about it for episode six. Disappointment. The sliding continues. We have more to go. We have more to go in the next episode, episode seven. But what are your thoughts on this video? What are your thoughts on episode six? Favorite parts, least favorite parts. Thoughts on how these games are going. Thoughts on Devin Funches. Thoughts on that Seahawks game. Thoughts on just the kicking, maybe. I, I, just talk about the kicking real quick. Because the kicking, it, it wasn't great this season, but it was good when it needed to be at some points. It was kind of inconsistent. But what are your thoughts? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.